people like to complain about coding interviews, how it's not real programming, how it's insulting, having to prep with cracking the coding interview and all this. But do you want to land a 100K job or not? Do you want to get into Fang? Because if you do, why are you complaining about coding interviews? It's the most gameable thing ever. There's literally a blueprint. Just do a couple of codes a day. It's like studying for an exam. We should be thankful our industry is so easily gameable. But here's the real question, I think, which is, should you be grinding away at LeetCode at all? Should you be wanting to get into these big tech companies? And I think the real answer is absolutely not. Here's a comment I found from a supposed Google engineer, and here's what he writes. I was questioned on binary trees, graphs, segment trees, and it's been a year since I got hired, and all I've done is documentation and a touch of code here and there. Yuck, I wanna join a startup. And that's the thing with these big tech companies. You'll practice all these advanced algorithms. And then when you get on the job, you'll be given the humongous task of increasing the padding of a button from 11 to 12 pixels. And this is the problem with big tech companies. You get hired as a cog in a bigger machine. You won't have to use your creativity as much as you do at a startup. You come into these comfy environments with snacks, ping pong tables, and these very specific tasks like increasing the padding of a button. Now, not all big tech companies are like this, but in general, I think there's a real danger. Sure, there's a strategy as well, getting hired by big tech. A lot of people think that, oh, I'm gonna get into big tech because then I'll have more free time to work on my side project. So it will be this like, incubator for me where I can eventually escape the matrix but in the meantime I can live with these snacks and very good salary as an incubator and that might be a good strategy but there is a danger and the danger is that you become disenfranchised that you get into these golden handcuffs and never get out that you lose your drive to build side projects and escape and this incubator actually kills your ambition. Billionaire Peter Thiel likes to say that competition is for losers. And I think it's pretty funny. A lot, Not a lot of people realize this, but Peter Thiel, the world's biggest contrarian, right, is a trained lawyer. He actually went to Stanford and Stanford Law School and then worked as a lawyer, securities lawyer, on Wall Street. I think that's pretty funny, but the point here is that Peter spent his early adulthood in these incredibly competitive environments. And what Peter noticed in these competitive environments is that competition can turn even geniuses, because admittedly you have to be pretty smart to get into Stanford, etc. He noticed these geniuses could be turned into conformist idiots by competition. If you look at the airline industry, one of the most competitive industries there are has seen zero innovation for the last 20 years. Why is that? Because competition shortens your time horizon, turns you into an idiot. And Peter also noticed that in these competitive environments, Stanford, Wall Street, these overachievers were all focused on the same goals. They all wanted to get into the same school and then the same jobs on Wall Street. And nowadays it's the same jobs in big tech. So I think the lesson here is clear. What do you really want? Don't just say you want to get into big tech because that's what everyone else wants. What do you want? What's your ambition? Don't let competition turn you into a sheep. So what should you do instead? I think it's worth mentioning, first of all, that if you're good at leak code, you shouldn't feel bad. It is testing computer science fundamentals. And there's a reason why big tech companies test for that. That is very useful knowledge to have. And it does filter out code monkeys who just learned React.js this past weekend. And maybe it tests for IQ as well. But the problem is when you, instead of wanting to learn computer science fundamentals, you turn lead code and coding interviews into a goal in and of itself. That's where the problem lies. And if you look at Indian culture, they like to praise big tech. The Indian dream is basically immigrating to the US, landing a job at Facebook or Google, getting this big salary and climbing the corporate ladder, maybe to a manager or something like this, because it's the epitome of a secure job. And I'm by no means looking down on this. I think it's very respectable raising you and your family out of poverty. But you have to ask yourself, do you want security or do you want something more? Are you a man of ambition? Because if you do have ambition, if it's important to you to not become a slave, a sheep cog, and you want to grow as fast as possible and eventually do your own thing, then a startup is going to be way more suitable, I think, if you're going to work for someone else. The great thing about tech is how results oriented it is. The tech industry doesn't care about your credentials. It doesn't care about what school you went to. In many cases, it doesn't even care what jobs you've had. All it cares about is 
What are you building? What have you done? This is how the based original companies are thinking, which is why personal branding is so powerful. You need to start personal branding, especially if you want to escape the rat race eventually. You need to start showcasing your ideas and creations on the internet. For instance, I recently talked to a company funded by Peter Thiel that I would never have found if I wasn't actively tweeting, DMing people. I would never have found this uploading my resume to LinkedIn. You have to be putting your ideas and creations out there. LinkedIn is for sheep. It's for these standardized jobs at Google, etc. So if you don't want to go the traditional lead code LinkedIn resume routes, put your ideas out, build in public, but you just have to understand that there are these two routes to do things. The old route is polishing your resume, being on LinkedIn and practicing lead code. The new route is becoming sovereign and putting out content and building in public. So thank you for watching all the way to the end. Do you agree that lead code is turning you into a sheep and that instead you should be focusing on your online presence? Let me know in the comments and I'll talk to you later. Stay sovereign.